That's right, guys. On Friday at Market Open, I put in an order that filled and closed my position in Carnival Cruise Lines. But this video isn't to boast about the profits that I made from this stock, but instead, it's a very valuable video for all of you guys out there, so you make sure you pay attention to this, because I'm going to show you how I turned a position that was down over 80% into a winning position and actually took profits on this position. The mindset and psychology that I used behind this strategy here for this position can definitely be used for other stocks as well. So if you're in a similar position where maybe a couple of your stocks are down significantly, this may be something to consider to employ into your personal strategy where you could turn a losing position into a winner. But as always, guys, if you want to see exactly when I buy and sell my stock, so we have a whole bunch of members now in the VIP group. If you're interested in joining, check out the link in the description down below. You can see every single trade that I make, when I make it, and I even have discussions with you guys on reasons as to why I make the decisions that I do with my personal portfolio. But anyways, like I said, it's going to be one of the most valuable videos on the channel, so hope you enjoy this. Drop a like down below if you guys appreciate this, and let me know in the comment section down below if you're in a similar position right now and how you play plan to turn that losing position into a winning position. So we're going to do something very different in this video where I'm actually going to walk you through the whole process from when I thought of buying the stock to buying the stock to consider selling the stock to actually selling the stock. So this is going to be fun. Let's get into it. So earlier this year, around January or so, Carnival was a stock that really popped onto my radar. It's been a company that I've kind of looked over briefly in the past when it was in the 60s, 70s. Never really made a position in the stock. I kind of understood the business, but never really took the time to really understand the fundamentals of this company. In January, the stock was down around 45% from a few months prior and had a downward sell-off since early 2018. The intriguing part about this business was that it was in an industry that I didn't really have any exposure to, which is a travel and leisure business, and it was a pretty profitable company as well. So I thought this is a business that could have some potential here as a long-term hold, as I believe that cruises would continue to increase in demand over time. So then the next few weeks I spent looking into the business, I looked at their 10K, their earnings reports, fundamentals, really everything available that they had on their investors page, even went through the SEC filings to look at some other information that they may have posted. And this gave me a very good understanding on the company's financials, balance sheets, income statements, and all that fun stuff. And here's a conclusion that I drew. Number one, Carnival was the biggest player in the space. Number two, their balance sheet was decent. Number three, it was in a growing industry. Number four, it was a very profitable business generally. And number five, they had a decent dividend yield that I believe to be around three to four percent at the time. Now guys, there was a lot more reading and understanding the business that went on behind the scenes here, of course, because you can't really understand a business in just five minutes. But in a nutshell, these five points here were looking good for Carnival, which is typically what I look for any of my investments. So after contemplating this, I decided that if this stock did drop below $40 per share again, I find that's a pretty good value at the time, of course, for the company, I would actually open up a position in Carnival Cruise Lines. But, and this is huge, because the stock isn't something that I would consider a premium company, you know, like your Johnson & Johnson or Microsoft or Visa, I would consider this kind of as a lower, mid-quality, okay, pretty good business, not really up there with the big dogs. But because of that, I would actually only allocate around 1% or so of my portfolio to this position. Now this 1% may seem like very little, but in the grand scheme of things, it is a decent chunk of money when you look at it from a pure dollar perspective. And that was all I was really comfortable holding in this industry and this particular company. Now we're into February, I continued monitoring the stock and pretty much most stocks out there because of the kind of the fears going on and you know stuff going on in China that we already know about. And I noticed that the stock started to get closer and closer to that $40 target that I had. So I had my cash ready to deploy. On February 24th, the stock dipped below $40 per share and I did not hesitate to open up a position as I had already done my prior research on this company. Now I had a goal in mind for total number of shares that I wanted for this company and I opened up my position with around 40% of those total shares and I got this at a cost basis of around $39.42 per share as I posted in my VIP group. 
I then gave out a few brief reasons in the post as to why I bought this stock, but I had more detailed discussions with the members on the Discord chat as to exactly when I was about to buy it, why I was going to buy it, and how long I planned to hold it for. You can see here though, at this time, this was well before the global issue really got out of hand, before all the lockdowns, before any of that happened, and my plan at this time was to slowly continue adding into this position as it dropped into the mid to low 30s, if it did that. I also did say here that I expect earnings to be hurt for about a year or two, thanks to the fears of people possibly not traveling due to the global issue. Now, who could have predicted what came next? If you were one that actually saw this coming, congratulations, you're probably a billionaire by now. But for those of us that did not see this coming, myself included, what followed in the weeks after I bought this stock in the general market was historic. We saw the stock market and this position, of course, drop by the quickest 30% decline in history. And quite honestly, guys, I didn't even have time to react with this position during the sell-off because I was busy allocating capital into premium companies that were trading at stupidly cheap valuations. So my priority on Carnival was put to the side, and before I knew it, the global issue got much, much worse. Now, in terms of Carnival specifically, the fundamentals in just a span of a few weeks had changed significantly for this company and this industry. This, of course, naturally as an investor, made me reevaluate this company, reevaluate my position, reevaluate this industry, and kind of figure out what a fair price would be now, all things considered, and how the stock could potentially get back to profitability in the coming years. I was pretty convinced that the stock is not going to be seeing its previous highs of $70 per share any time in the foreseeable future. And now it looked more and more like the $30 to $40 range was a more fair price for this company. But now even that may have been a little bit too high in my opinion because of these following factors. The company took on billions and billions of dollars in debt. The company cut their dividend. The previous fears that I had suspected became a reality as cruises weren't even allowed to operate for a few months. And all this resulted in some permanent changes in the fundamentals because once you take on that debt, the only thing you can do is to pay that off or eventually file for bankruptcy because you can't meet those obligations. So I really had to adapt my thesis here, figure out what I was going to do, and I had a choice of either cutting out this position and taking a loss, continue holding, or buying more shares. So when April rolled around, this was some of the darkest times of the stock in its history. The stock was down over 90% now from its highs, and it entered single-digit territory. That is, it was trading less than $10 per share. I wasn't too worried about my position because, again, due to the nature of the business and the type of the company it was, and other different factors that I considered, I had only decided to dedicate a small portion of my portfolio to the stock. But regardless, I was still down 80% from when I bought, so it's not a fun position to be in. So once again, I spent a bit more time because at this point, there was a lot of news coming out almost on a weekly basis around this company and this industry and just kind of the whole market in general. So I had to reevaluate all the new information and figure out what I really wanted to do with this position. Was it time to cut this and take losses on this? Or maybe on the flip side, maybe at these current prices, there was some opportunity here to lower my cost basis and potentially make some profits in the future. Well, after a lot of debating, I came to the conclusion that around $8 per share, this stock had a very good risk to reward. I was willing to take that on in my portfolio personally, add to my position, and that's exactly what I proceeded to do. On April 2nd, I let my VIP group know that I went ahead and added to my CCL position. I posted an explanation here, which was available to everyone in the group, and I say that the risk to reward ratio for CCL in the $8 range was just too attractive to pass up on, and that the current price gives me opportunity to lower my cost basis on my existing position to a new cost basis of $20.70 cents per share. I also went on to say that I believe the stock should recover to this $20 range within a year or two in my opinion. And that being said, I outlined the risks that this was a position that I could lose my full investment on as it could very realistically go bankrupt even though they had raised billions of dollars in debt. I also made a statement at the end here saying that this could be an investment that doubles or triples my investment, but I believe it would take this business about three to five years to get to that level where it would actually make sense. So what I did, like I said, was add to my position with 33% more shares than I had initially bought, and this helped me lower my cost basis significantly. So this was my plan at the time. I made a video on this. I let you guys know exactly what I was doing when I did that. And with my new position now with Carnival here with a lot more shares, 
but a much more lower cost basis. I was still very comfortable holding this because it still made up such a tiny fraction of my overall portfolio but it gave me the opportunity to make some money on this investment. I think that the price around $8 seemed to have been a bit too cheap, especially now looking hindsight, and I did not want to miss out on that opportunity here to actually turn this massive losing position into a possible winning position. I will be totally honest here, I never expected Carnival to rebound this strongly and this quickly and quite honestly, it's mind boggling how well the stock has done in recent weeks. In the last month, the stock was up nearly 70% and the shares that I bought in April, around $8 or so, were up well over 100%. But at the same time, the fundamentals still hadn't improved in the business. And going back to why I initially invested in the business with my reason from January, yes, Carnival was still a big player in this space, but no, their balance sheet was not decent anymore. It was debt ridden. No, this industry will not grow in the next few years as it still needs to recover from the mental scars of this global issue. No, this is not going to be a very profitable business anymore in the foreseeable future as any profits that they make will need to go to pay down debt. And no, there is no dividend yield anymore and won't be for a very long time until again that debt is reduced significantly. So I asked myself if I saw these metrics for the business today at the price it was at today, which is $20 per share, does Carnival still make sense as an investment at these prices? The answer was a strong no. Remember, when I lowered my cost base to around $20 per share, I expected the stock to potentially get to this price in about one to two years as fundamentals and the business and the industry actually started improving. But what we have here is pretty much nothing has changed in the last couple of months, yet the stock has more than doubled from where it was at just in April. So I thought about it and it didn't make any sense anymore for me to hold this position because it already hit my target one to two years earlier than expected and I went ahead and actually closed out my position in Carnival stock. On Friday, I sold out of this position completely at the market open for around $22.33 per share for a total gain of around 7.5% on my overall position. This is including the shares that I bought at $39 per share. Now, because I was able to significantly reduce my cost basis when the price was around $8 per share, it helped me actually turn a profit on this investment, despite the stock still being down near 50% from when I had initially bought my first set of shares back in April, and the stock is still down over 70% from its all-time highs. This stock and this industry has truly gone to a roller coaster here in the last few months, along with some other industries as well. And investors who had high conviction and bought in around late March, early April, when the stock was trading at its lows, have been rewarded handsomely here in just a couple of months. Can the stock continue going up? Sure it can, especially in this sort of market where everything just keeps going up day after day. But to me, $22 per share was extremely generous for this company and I was not comfortable holding it past this point at its current fundamentals today. Now, if we see the stock go back to under $10 per share in the next few months, I may open up another position here and potentially ride another wave up in the future. But as of right now, guys, this company has gone from a pretty decent company to a very low quality company because of all the debt and issues surrounding this company and industry. And if I'm being extremely honest with you guys, it's not a stock that I'm really interested in anymore. So the lesson that I learned here I want to get across to you guys is that not every single investment that you make is gonna be a winning position right off the bat. Remember with this stock, I was down over 80% at one point, but I took the time and rationally thought about it and figured out a way to actually make this 80% loser into a 7.5% gainer at the end of it. Remember, the market on average on a regular year returns you around 7% annually. So to make that amount of profit in the span of just a few months here, especially from a losing stock, I consider that a win personally. But honestly, the main thing that I learned here from Carnival is that during these tough times, you have to stick with premium companies. Companies like McDonald's and Starbucks also went through some very difficult times that they had to pretty much shut down their stores in some parts of the world and not allow foot traffic and all that kind of stuff. So they were hurt significantly, but those businesses did not go through what Carnival did. Those businesses, because of their brand, because of their balance sheet, because of everything behind the company, was able to weather through this storm and actually come out much stronger and both of the stocks are already starting to approach their all-time highs once again. Carnival, I can't say the same for, and I don't think that's going to see its all-time highs for a very long time. So really what I've learned is that when you're building a portfolio, 
focus on the premium companies because those are the ones that won't get hit as hard and will bounce back much quicker. But anyways, to each their own. I know Carnival is a very controversial stock here on YouTube. A lot of investors bought into the stock at $40 or above. A lot bought in at around the $8 to $10 range as well. So we have a good mix here. Let me know in the comment section down below what you're doing with your Carnival position, whether you sold out, took a loss, got a profit. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. But either way, thank you so much for watching. Hope this video was valuable to you. Consider sharing it with a friend if you think they can learn from this as well. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to invest positively and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.